on. We're on. And we're, we're on. on. We live. <laughs> well, I just want you to know this is my first time ever going live. Oh, really? Yes. Well, what? This is not my thing. What? No, this is not my thing. Being on stage. Being on my yeah. on stage is what. Listen, it's Friday night. I'm in my living room. What? <laughs> I'm about to fish out of water right now. Right. Is it because of what's going on that, that, that that's causing you to be home? You wouldn't be home if it wasn't for COVID. Not at all. People Not on the road. I'll be somewhere ordering room service, okay? <laughs> Living right. like, exactly. And I'll be just getting off stage probably, introducing somebody or something. Yeah. That's, that's true. Do you miss it? I do, but, but you know, in so many ways, I really needed the rest. I really needed the rest, but I miss it. But I needed right. to, I really okay. did. Those guys were probably they're slowing you down a little bit so you can take My care of yourself. It is like infant skin now. I think I'm too risky. <laughs> infant skin. I gotta write that down. I got infant skin. Can't even <laughs> sun no more. <laughs> you're crazy. So so let me get into it. Uh, uh, you're to me, and I've said this on record, mm -hmm. you're the you're the smartest funniest, consistent comedian that I've ever worked with, and really that I've ever known. I've never worked with Richard Pryor, so I can't really say what he was like. Right. But as a female, I think I've worked with the female Richard Pryor, and I'm not saying this because you're on the show. I say this to anybody who will listen. You. I, you have so many, like your routine, like every time you come out with an hour, none of the jokes are jokes I ever heard before. Thank We've you. done. And I work very hard to do that. I work very hard to do that. I've seen I've seen comedians with notebooks and scraps of paper and all that stuff when they were working out. How do you work out? How do you work your material up? The same way. I mean, I'm, I'm constantly writing. I'm constantly writing, and then I I um I've been working so much. I uh, every time I hit the stage, I try at least one new joke. So okay. if, you're, if you're doing thirty cities, by the time you finish, you got thirty new mm -hmm. jokes. So you keep gotcha. trying, keep trying, keep trying, keep trying. Then once I get a set, I start with the theme, and then I get a set. And then I just master it and perfect it and keep going over it over and over and over and over. And then I shoot it and then I get rid of it. Unbelievable. And how many specials so far? I'm sorry? How many specials have you shot so far? Five. Five, five specials. Five Not specials. including the stuff we've done. You've done five solo specials. That's amazing. I've done five solo specials and I'm so proud of them. And every last one, I always say, oh, this is the last one. This is it. And Because I, I never think that I'm going to have another one. Right. But I'm ready for another one. You're ready for another one. So you go through that. It's almost like giving birth to a kid. I'm never have kids again. But then you love them, so you do it again. Because it's always, it's always, it's scary. First of all, it's always scary, you know, because you always don't know if the child gonna be ugly or not, too. <laughs> right. And then you know, we're in a culture now where it's it's there's a lot of funny out there. There's right. a lot of funny. There's funny every single day. So as a as a comedian, I have to find my very very unique perspective on how to do things, and mm. you you just pray to God that people can get it. Right, right. That's amazing. We we did a project together after Kings of Comedy. I'm a, I'm gonna I'm play a Kings of Comedy clip, and then I want to go to the story you and I had, the conversation okay. you and I had after Kings. Okay. <laughs> okay. So let me let me play uh, Milk and Cookies uh, from Bernie Mac real quick. And then we can have that talk. Okay. I ain't no psychologist. Then this woman man gonna sit there. She gonna go upstairs. The two year old, her the two year old say, "Where the cookies and shit." <laughs> he gonna tell her him downstairs. <laughs> Who the fuck is him? <laughs> like I ain't got no name or something. Him downstairs. The two year old said, well, I go get this shit myself. <laughs> she gonna walk her little bro leg leg down there. I'm standing in the corner. I watch her get a little step ladder. She gonna go on over the refrigerator. I said, What the fuck you doing? She looked at me, I'm gonna get some milk and cook. I said, Didn't I tell your punk ass boy he couldn't handle no goddamn cook? <laughs> when I tell the faggot he could handle. No <laughs> I'm telling you, can't have no goddamn milk cookie. Okay. So, 
okay, <laughs> that was funny as usual. Right. right. But, but, but could a female comedian get away with that type of comedy? Of Would course. they look at you different? Because you, like, will they accept that kind of comedy from a man like Bernie? But then you try to do that raw. Like, I, 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 I deal with it all the time. And it's always the messenger. They have a problem with the messenger always. But here's the only way you're going to break down barriers is to do it anyway. Just right. do it anyway. Do it anyway, right. and, and they'll catch on later. Yeah, but right. yeah, right. We're, we're doing that now. We're very right. much doing that. Okay, okay. So so here's a story that a lot of people don't know. So mm -hmm. we're at a comedy show in, in Los Angeles at the, right. I think we were at the Universal Amphitheater, and you came up to me and you said what? I said, let's do the Queens of Comedy. And he said to me, there are no queens. And I, I said, did. I said, what do you mean? There are queens. He was like, nah, there aren't any queens. But you were falling into the regular stereotype that all women shows don't sell. Right. That women are just a little bit funny and all we do is mail bash. And right. I told you, I said, no. Oh, no. So th first I said, well, do the kings and let me host. Mm, I remember I said, that. You know, I said, but then I said, I tell you what, I'll go out and I'll find the queens. I'll go and get the queens for you. And, yeah, I, and, I, and I said, if you go get them, mm -hmm. we can try it out. And we you went and, got and I went and got Everybody try to give me credit and say, well, you did kings. So it was a natural extension to do queens. And I'm like, it wasn't natural. It, it was, was something, it was brought to me. You brought it to me. It was the thing that I didn't like about the fact that, because I think that women, we always find, get the shorter end of the stick. Mm -hmm. we, didn't, we didn't go to the theaters. Like it would have been so bomb for us to go to the theaters just like the Kings. Right. And I know, right. I know you as a promoter, you know, as a businessman, mm -hmm. you, know, you had to do the business of it, but right. I just wish that we could have really, really went to the theaters. Cause it looked like we just, it just looked like they was on a plane and we was on a bus. <laughs> so right. It and that, like, okay, we're here too. Exactly. But it's, let me tell you, this is the truth. The first tour we did, a lot of people don't know we did too. We, the first one we did was was hard. hard, but I remember I remember watching it. You know, every night I watched it in Dallas one night. I remember it was half capacity, is empty seats, and and I watched it, and I'm like, to me, and this is the truth, it was better than the Kings of Comedy show. We Literally. had we had passion. We when I tell you there was no egos with the queens, we had no egos. We had no. We was do each other's makeup. Girl, what are you wearing? No, don't wear those shoes. Wear this shoe. We 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 wanted to prove so bad that we were just as funny as the men, and we, that was our sole goal to prove to people that women are funny. Right. So we came together. We had the camaraderie that we just wanted to get it done. And you changed history. You you you. It was historic. Yeah. I didn't, and I'm I'm so happy to be have been a part of it because literally I never I didn't think it would work. I, really? <laughs> you I was, think it will work? I was, I was scared. Like, I literally, and I'll tell you the truth. I just did not know. I mean, and then I got all like I'm a young guy. I was let's see, we did Queens in '99, so I was like right. 20 years old. And I'm listening to all these older promoters saying, "Man, nobody's gonna go see women. Yeah, all women, black women." I know you told me that you was like, "People don't want to see all women." I'm like, Walter, yes, they do. Yes. They do. Well, yeah. with, with all that said, we actually ended up filming Queens, mm -hmm. which I was very happy about. I remember Paramount called me. I was on vacation with my family. It was like in August. Uh -huh. I was at the beach, sitting at a Cracker Barrel in a, in a rocking chair. And the head of distribution at Paramount said, can you do a Queens of Comedy project and have it ready for January? Oh, my God. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I said, know, yeah. You know, we thought that pyramid was the shit. <laughs> We had to get major to us. We filmed that in a month. We prepared. Okay. I was asked to do it in August, and we filmed in September. It's amazing. But we were well groomed. We were on the road. I we mean, on, exactly. it, it, like we were hot. We were hot. So I mean, it, it it all just worked out and played right in. It was it was perfect timing. I'm gonna play a joke from Queens of yours, and I wanted want you to tell me where the inspiration came. Okay. For this joke, this is one of the best jokes ever. Women, we go through a lot of shit. 
know, we go through a lot of shit. But the amazing mm -hmm. thing about us, baby, we have the ability to bounce back because we made like that. That's right. We have a certain, baby, let me tell y'all something. We have a certain rhythm in us that we, no matter what we go through, we're going to be all right. And see, when we was little girls, your mother knew that you had that certain rhythm in you. In you. So when you was about eight years old, she gave you one essential toy. She knew that with this toy, you would get a swivel in your hips and an attitude to match. Ladies, when you was about eight years old, your mother put you outside on the front porch and she gave you a hula hoop. Oh my God. You might understand why she insisted that you learn how to do the hula hoop. You got outside with the hula hoop rocking around your waist. And at first it was a little bit difficult for you, but you kept on trying. After a while, when you got it rocking to your own certain pattern, it made a certain sound that says shh, 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 shh. And when you heard that sound, you knew you was the shit. Oh my God. <laughs> Did your girlfriend holler, put it around your neck? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, where, where did that come from? First of all, you got to understand. <laughs> in that clip, I am what, 26 years old, mm. liberated, first time making some good money. Now, that's not my first time making money, but I had, I mean, I, like, I was an entrepreneur. I had businesses before, but doing stand up, I was feeling liberated. Like, I'm on the road. I got fans. What? <laughs> like, like, just like you, 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 I was feeling empowered. So, I mean, that was like a young girl feeling her, feeling her sexuality. And wow. uh, it worked. It yeah, worked. Yeah. And when I tell you, I took so many chances on that night. That was the first time I tried that outfit on. Never tried it. The girls mailed it to me to Memphis. Wow. I think the day before, um, I didn't get my hair done. I wore a wig instead. So that was the first time I wore the wig. Oh God, it was like a whole lot of first chances. Like, but the adrenaline was rushing. Like I, I was screaming in the joke. I didn't even mean to scream, but I was just so excited. You're amped. Yeah, just amped up. And and, and I think how many you need that raw natural energy. So I think it I think, I, it, was, I, I think it was it was amazing. And it's funny when you talk about the camaraderie, you guys, you don't even know this. I was in a hotel room, we all were on the same floor. Uh-huh. And I heard Monique's always the loudest. So I heard I heard in the hallway. So I looked through the peephole and they had on their slippers, bathrobes, hair curlers, satin. I was and they and that was her and, and Adele and they were walking to your room. And I'm like, this is like hanging out with your aunts. <laughs> yes. Yes. We, was, had, we had so much fun. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, so it seemed like a lot of fun. What about that that clip of you guys? I got a clip of you guys riding to the radio station interview. And Monique was riding you because you look so good at six o'clock in the morning. Well, here's the thing. <laughs> <laughs> Let me show that. Just uh, please speak to the folk in America. See, this is what's happening. You know, um, see, we ain't made up. We can just flew in. You mean get right, 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 that right. bitch down? Just <laughs> And y'all don't get ready. <laughs> no, we filming. Y'all know we filming. You know we filming. Why are you not ready? They well, I guess they learned. <laughs> Listen, Monique's energy. Oh my God. 
<laughs> you just did not know what you just did not know where she was going. <laughs> and we all just sit back and just ride the wave because it would just, it would take over the room. Yeah. It would, Walter, do you remember when we got put out of the car? We, okay, we got put out. Okay, we rented a car. Right. Queens that convertible, and then. Got mad because Monique leaned on the hood. The man didn't want us to touch the car. So uh, the yeah. To get in the car. He put us out of the car because Monique yep. was on the hood. On the hood. He would always count on her for, to be to be that person. So. Always count on her. Always. So then, so then we said we came up with we did the Queen's tour. We did the Queen's movie. We did the King's movie. Right. And the King's tour. And then we were like, what if we put them all together? Oh my God, that was so awesome. Was that crazy? Let me tell you something. The Kings was so fucking bougie. Uh. <laughs> explain. Explain. <laughs> they were so bougie. Because you know, the Queens, we was like, yes, bitch, what's up? We go over there to the Kings, they're like, mm, what's up? Like, <laughs> right. Almost, almost like you didn't belong there. Like, what are y'all doing here? Then they're like, I don't think they like us. <laughs> like, oh, so, yeah. They were, they were Kings. They were like that. And listen, and then we really knew how real it was because, you know, the queens, we had our little writer. We had our little chicken. You know, we had our little little writer. We go over there to the kings. They, they got, like, buffet, real <laughs> liquor. We're like, okay, wait a minute. They're stepping it up over here. Okay, we knew. Listen, I'm taking notes. I'm like, okay, this is this is what you're supposed to be having over right. here. Right. Yeah. Right. It, was, it was a whole nother world with the kings. But we yeah. caught on. No, and it did. And, and and when we played the Georgia Dome, and I have a Georgia Dome clip of you. Oh my God. It was, it, I had it, a headache all that day. All, I we had a headache. Rehearsal. We went to rehearsal. Right. And I had a headache so bad. But for when when I hit that stage though, it was it was awesome. It was awesome. Cool. It, it was unreal. It 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 was it. It was a proud moment in life that I was just so glad to be a part of something so spectacular. It was right. amazing. 53,000 people 53, for black, black comedians is something special. And remember, so, the kids didn't want to introduce us. What the fuck was that about? Like, like they, they were, us. They were bougie, like you said. <laughs> well, I would like to ask them, why did they hate us like that? Or was right. they... On it. What, what, what was that about? What was going on? I would like to ask. Maybe one day we get a chance to do that, to figure what? that out. <laughs> well, you guys definitely deserved to speak. Right. Yeah, I know. Get to the stage. Steve, Steve used to introduce you as Samora. You remember Wait, that? Okay, so here's the funny part. So Steve kept introducing me as Samora. So I'm all, I'm all nervous. I'm like, first of all, I'm just like, damn. I, I mean, I don't want to go over here and like tell Steve Harvey how to do his job, but uh, you are saying my name wrong. So I, <laughs> I said, how you doing? I said, um, you keep calling me Samora. I said, and my name is Samore. He was like, oh, well, you know I'm country. <laughs> he didn't even want to try to fix it. He was like, well, you know I'm country. Right, I'm so like, deal with it. Try to get some more, right? Yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> That's the. It was amazing because we knew that we had to bring it because they was bringing it, right. and we knew we had to bring it. Like they were, listen, they wasn't cutting no no slack. They weren't right. like, oh well, the women are here. no. They was like, forget y'all, we doing us. So we was like, oh, forget y'all, we doing us. That's you. That's right. good. Let me show a clip. A Man, short clip of you. I was a carriage with them. I was shocked. Or with. Okay. with this is the same. This is the same night. This is a piece of your set from the Georgia Dome. Let me let me play that for people. So from the from the Georgia Dome tour. You see, you gotta remember one thing. All that shit has a side effect, and they don't want you to listen to the side effects. You ever be watching the television and they tell you about this sinus medicine, and they have you believing that this medicine is a bad motherfucker, and right. <laughs> When a commercial go off, here come the motherfucking side effects. <laughs> Warning, this medicine will give you insomnia, headaches, and diarrhea. Now you got to decide whether you want to deal with a runny nose or a runny ass. What are you going to deal with? <laughs> but I like that shit. 
I wish every fucking thing came with a warning label with their side effects on it, especially men. I wish me and y'all had a little label right here on your motherfucking neck so we can know what your ass is all about when we first meet you. I'm serious. Let's say you in the club, you chilling. He checking you out, you checking him out. You looking good, he looking good. Right before he passed you, you see his motherfucking side effects. Warning, this nigga is subject to run up your credit Fuck about two or three of your girlfriends and has a tendency to whoop a bitch ass. What you gonna do? Yes. Awesome. Yes. <laughs> it's it's it. it's crazy. It's classic. And I hate and watching it. myself. So yeah. That's yeah. <laughs> you hate watching your own self, really? Uh, I hate it. How do yeah. you edit your? How do you edit your specials? You just... I do. I get through it. You yeah. just suck it up. I get through it. Yeah. Suck it up. You know. It, as an artist, you critique every little thing. Right, right. Mm -hmm. So we work we work together on Queens, mm -hmm. Kings and Queens together. Do you remember the, the the tour we did where we did the search? Yes. We were in the in the, in the mm -hmm. Young Comics open, and then you guys closed. Alexander, Flex Alexander yeah. hosted. Flex right? Flex hosted. Yeah. Well, how, do you remember anything about that? Do you do you re recall it? I do. Um, Ronnie Jordan was just like. The yeah. hunt, like we would all run to the side of the stage just to see the audience reaction, like right. to his set. Um, yeah, the young the young comics were so good. Like yeah. they were good. Like they were really, really good. Yeah, it was a good it was a good tour. It was a very, was a very good tour. And they I mean they had us to look at. I mean, hey, right. We right. Put them first. And you guys supported them. I think they liked that. We did. They, they meant a lot. But you're right, Ronnie Jordan was up their presentation was nice yeah it was yeah. really it was really it good was it was hot so then we did another project you know it's funny when i when i told paramount i wanted to do this project and i wanted to call it latham entertainment presents and they were like presents what <laughs> <laughs> i said presents Are you comedy <laughs> they were they didn't like the name oh my god and they didn't they they didn't like it and i had to force the name but the bottom line was Never, they loved I the show about that, I remember. Yeah, we actually had a meeting about. I don't know if you remember. We were all in Atlanta. Me, you, DL, J. Anthony Brown, Ricky, and we were sitting at a table discussing changing the name. And I'm like, yeah. the name is not going to change anything. I'm telling you that you need to brand your name. You, you need to brand your name, just like you, Simmons was synonymous with comedy. Yeah. Lincoln needs to be synonymous with comedy. Me yeah. and you were having dinner uh, at. Uh, I think it was at Morton's in in Charlotte because we had a show in Charlotte. And I you told me that what you Walter, you always paid. I met <laughs> I always paid. But you the, the one of the biggest lessons that I didn't mm -hmm. learn from you and I should have mm -hmm. is putting my name on stuff. I just felt it felt funny. But then when you see people like Tyler Perry and now Steve Harvey is doing it and you're doing it. It just made sense. I just didn't get it. You know what I'm saying? And that's what happens when you're 20 something, you think you know everything. Yeah, but you, know? you, you were you were learning. And I learned a lot from you. Like I can honestly tell you that you're the you're the first millionaire that I knew personally. <laughs> <laughs> and you told me you became a millionaire. You forgot right. that. I, <laughs> you were, you were you, oh yeah, I became a millionaire yeah. last night. I'm like, what? <laughs> you know, like like you you're the youngest millionaire I've ever met. You bought me my first Rolex. Do you remember that? I remember that. Probably my I first. remember that. You still, uh, you still have it? You, 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 you upgraded it. I upgraded it. I put some ice <laughs> on it. I did put a little escapade on it. You know, a little <laughs> ice on it. You iced it out a little bit. Out a little bit. Right, but yeah, right. But I learned a lot. Um, the show that we did, um, the Latham Present show. Yeah. Now, the problem I had with that show. Yep. On that tour, because we did a little tour first to get ready for the show. Mm-hmm. Um, I headlined the show. Mm -hmm. And the night that we filmed the show, I also headlined. But when the show came out, I went first. Mm -hmm. Well, I stopped speaking to you because yes, I you was did. really, really upset. I'm like, okay, so how did I headline the show? And then and now all of a sudden I'm first. Mm -hmm. but then I learned something about the business and the power of owning owning your own material and owning your likeness and how you want to be presented. So right. from then on, I was like, oh, no, everything I do, I will have to have creative control over how I'm presented. 
You know, I mean, I can't right. be mad at this man because this is his. This is his show. Right. I was still mad though. But I, you, 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 I'm glad. I'm glad we're back. I You're was, not mad anymore. I know you were mad. I, I heard it. I heard it. You know, and sometimes, honestly, and sometimes in this business, some people are going to get mad. You know, you just can't make everybody happy. So in my position then is like the studio is saying, can you switch the order? Can you switch the order? And I was in the position of I needed them to distribute it. Right. So it's like, you know, playing both sides. And that's that's a skill set. You know, how do I make sure the studio does what I want and also keep my artists happy? And it was a it was a balancing act, you know, and everybody everybody wasn't happy all the time. But, you know, it's something you had to do. And it taught me it taught me as a business as a business person, you know, that there's tough decisions to be made. And sometimes um, it looks one way on the outside and business. Right. It works. It so work. yeah. I mean, <clears throat> Cedric Cedric was upset when we did Kings in the Kings movie. When we filmed it, Cedric went last. But every time we tested the movie to live audiences, they were like, why doesn't Bernie go last? Why doesn't he last? He should be last. He's, the, you know, so MTV made me and Spike Lee switch the order, which was hard to do because basically if you look at the movie, said Steve is introducing Cedric. That's mm -hmm. what you see, but you hear him introducing Bernie. Bernie. Wow. Introduce yeah. Right. Yeah. Exactly. It was very difficult to do, but that's what people wanted. They wanted to see him last. And it was hard. I know it was hard for Cedric. And it was, you know, I tried to explain it to him, but like you said, you got, you're serving so many masters when you're in this business. Yes. And you, you got a as a balancing act, you know. Oh my God. You've had some rough nights though. Remember the night in Atlanta? Should we even tell people about that? I was the only one on your team. I was the only one on your team. You were the only one. I was the you only were... one on your team. Here I am. Oh yeah. <laughs> I don't see again. Rough night. It was you a rough. It was rough. It was a rough tour from that night to the end of that tour. Was here's the thing, mind you, it's like everybody's all the same age, so it's like nobody's like you're the leader, and I think you was the youngest one. I was the youngest one, yeah, right. yeah, I, I, yeah. I had a last October. I went to Steve's house. He invited me down to his house in Atlanta, and we finally got to talk about that. You know, wow. yeah, and he was like, "Well, man, I didn't realize." You were 26 when we started this. Right. He said, I'm going to be 63 this year. I wow. said, he said, how old are you going to be? I was like 49. He's like, you were that much younger than us? He's you like, know, we were teaching you. I used to call you <laughs> Uncle Wally. And I was the youngest. And I'm calling him. <laughs> it was Steve. He really, it was really enlightening for him in his position to, to apologize oh, I, and to I, say, I, you know what? Yeah, it was. It, it was, was tough. tough. It was it tough. Was. Major. Yeah. It was it was a tough night. It was a tough yeah. night. But we pulled it off. It was really yeah. good. We pulled it off and it was big. So I got some questions on here. Okay. Uh what clip do you have now? You have another clip? <laughs> Ellie presents. Okay, we were talking about Ellie Presents. Let's show Ellie Presents clip and then I'm gonna go to some questions real quick, okay? Mm -hmm. Y'all right. stay fucking a young boy. <laughs> I stand outside the club and wait for him to come out. Nigga got that Madden 2000. Nigga got that Madden 2000. Got that NBA Live. Nigga got that NBA Live. Got that Jersey throwback. Nigga, what shall lie? One person I know never have a problem finding a motherfucking man. J Lo. Oh, that bitch stays busy, don't she? <laughs> J Lo throw that pussy from the free throw line. Oh shit! Hey, that bitch don't give a fuck. <laughs> they don't, don't give a fuck if you're black, white, or Puerto Rican. That bitch like freaking. <laughs> that was a great joke. How, you have so many. <laughs> I love to write, though. I love. Listen, that's my thing. I love to write, and don't let me get around and can get a rhyme in there. Oh boy. <laughs> The, one, one of the questions says, why did you decide to become a comedian? Wow, it was, a, it was um, first of all, I, it was an art that I always admired. I love, loved, loved um, Joan Rivers. I was mm. a Joan Rivers fan. And at the time, I mean, it was other things that I had tried. Um, I, I have a degree in business administration, a minor in mathematics. Um, I taught school for a little while. I owned my own business. 
I own my own shoe store, I own my own food store. Um, comedy is something I tried and it mm. worked. And wow. I love along the way. Wow. So, and I tell people all the time that I read, I actually read a book on how to be a stand-up comedian before I tried it. Wow. I, I read the entire book. The book is still out. I read the entire book and did exactly what the book said to do. And it worked. Wow. And That's amazing. I don't think I ever knew that story. How how old were you then? You you think? Did I tell you don't never ask? Don't ask. Me. That's right. That's right. That's I was right. About size six. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. In my twenties. What yeah. what part of success were you least prepared for? What part? And of that came and and that question came from Bill Young. You remember Bill? Oh, I love Bill. Yes. What's up, Bill? <laughs> yeah, he's on. The, he's on here. But yeah, well, he asked. Bill, we we used to, we used to, we used to work Bill to death. He loved y'all. Part of success, I wasn't work. I wasn't ready for. Yeah. Um, the tough decisions and the rejection. Mm. Uh, that was that was a that was a hard thing because you know I'm from, I'm from New Jersey and everybody in New Jersey we the shit. You the shit. Right, right. Shit. And when you get to LA, you run into like eighteen motherfuckers that look <laughs> like you, and they're all the shit. <laughs> <laughs> so now. It's like, it's like okay, now I gotta I gotta reinvent myself. So yeah, that, it was that, that was a an adjustment, and I'm so glad that um, I had the business sense to be able to um, focus on stand up and be able to executive produce my own projects, right. and instead of having to compete in the you know the Hollywood world. Right, just being that in that wheel. What, yeah. Speaking of Hollywood, what is your feeling about the, the business as it is, as far as females and black females in general, getting, you know, some shine finally. Like it I took a long time, but now you see, you know. I love it. I absolutely love it. I, I love it. Um, I love that. It, and it's, it's, it's women from all walks of life. Right. You know, I love that it's all walks of Cause black women, one thing about us, we're not one particular type. Mm. And I'm glad that people are getting that, that we're not one type. So yeah. I'm that all women of all walks of life, black women of color are being displayed. I like that. That's, that's good. That's good. Okay. I probably have a question, but I was going to see if everybody, I have a really big question. How do you want to be remembered? What's your legacy? I just want to be just said that I was funny. As long as you said I was funny, I'm good. Mm. As long as I made you laugh at least once. I'm good. Then you're good. I'm good. You're good. Yeah. So, as we wrap up, how do people stand world for you to try to leave a legacy? You know that, right? What? I mean, there's a yeah. lot going on in the world. Think about the world as busy as it is. There's a lot going on to try to leave a legacy nowadays. That's true. That's true. Like you probably like save an old lady from a burning building to go down there. <laughs> <laughs> in today's time. There's a lot going on, right? right. You gotta really step it all the way up. Now in social media, you got you got to really right. A lot. How do you how do you feel about social media and these comedians who become social media comedians? Like, I'm, do you have any? You know, well, the thing they cut out the middleman. They mm -hmm. cut out straight to consumer. Right now, how they how they how do they um, financially maximize off of that? We'll have to see, and what's going to be the longevity of it. But right, they don't that that has to stop my money. Yeah. <laughs> If it does, then I hate they motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, yeah. Right. Do do you when you did Def Comedy Jam, did you feel like that made a big difference in your life after that, after you filmed it? Of course. Did you it. know, Def Jam solidified you back in the day. Like Def Jam solidified that you were actually funny. And mm -hmm. what people didn't know about the Def Jam audience when people say, like, oh, Def Jam was so tough. What they didn't know was that the audience stood outside in the cold. Wow. Before they came in. So mm -hmm. we had no time to be one a whole lot of fluff. Right. With right. Def Jam. It was like, all right, they, they sitting there, they wet, they cold. Like, let's go. Like, like right. all right, y'all laugh and then y'all stop. It wasn't no warm up. It was like, let's go. Let's go. Yeah. Wow. Wow. So it kind of solidified you. It, it it made you it it made you a household name. A household name. You did well if you did yeah. well. Yeah, you're right. How does how do you feel about comics like Tiffany Haddish right now? Like what do you feel 
I guess this that's the question. How do you feel about comics like Tiffany Haddish right now? I don't know how you want to answer that. She's a female comedian. Right. She's doing her thing. Okay. As far as her stand up, do you ever I've never wonder? Seen, I've never seen her stand up. Right, right. So you haven't okay. Okay. Any any <clears throat> any talk about a king a Queens of Comedy reunion? Here's the thing, people always ask about that. I just think that if we do it again, it'll be compared to the first one. Mm. I think you'll be you'll be you'll spend the first 10 minutes looking at everybody, analyzing how they look different from the last time. Mm. And um, I think when it's greatness done, you leave it alone. Mm. Um, unless you're going to put a spin on it. Mm. I like it. So there you go. That's a great talking. answer. Great answer. Okay. So when do you when do you go back on the road? Or when are you hoping to go back on the road? When it, open, when it opens up. Um, when it opens up, I'm looking to possibly do some virtual shows, meaning like doing some shows with some socially distanced audiences or something. Because you know, as a comedian, everybody in my house tired of me. They tired of me. <laughs> they tired of me. You know, as a comedian, we we have that energy where we just wanna, you know, get right. it out of me. They're like, uh, you need to find something. <laughs> go back on the road. Uh, well, I'm. A, I'll say. I'll say this. I've worked with a lot of comedians, as you already know, mm -hmm. and very few of them I can count on less than a hand, who I call friend, and who yeah. I still admire and respect. And you're on that list. Thank you. That's very very short list. Appreciate. I wanted to say that. And I'll say that to you in person. I'll say that. We release that show and put my ass as your friend as the headliner. You know I'm cold. <laughs> I'm holding on to that. <laughs> good, good. Well, I really appreciate. I consider you a friend, and like I said, I learned a lot. I, you know, I I was there. I watched you. We talked. I learned a lot, yeah. and um, hey, it motivated me and it pushed me to not wait for anybody to give me anything. I went out and did my own, and that's yeah. because I've seen people like you do it. Thank like you. you're 26 doing it. Yeah, yeah. that's major. Thank you. Thank you. And you were doing your thing too. So we did it together. Oh, I was doing that thing. Yes, yes, sir. Every night, every night, every tour. Putting it down. Putting it down. Well, thank you for getting dolled up for us and hanging out before. I haven't had lashes since March. <laughs> <laughs> you put on lashes for it. I'm thank excited. You. Excited. Thank I made everybody go to bed. I'm like, y'all shut the fuck up. <laughs> In this living room tonight. I love it. I love it. Well, you guys stay safe. Thank and, you. Uh, and congratulations on the show. Thank you. And I love you guys too. Really. I really, really mean that. Take uh, care. Y'all have a good night. All right. Good night. All right. Bye.